Finally, he was spurred into action by an essay on natural selection by Alfred Russell Wallace. It looked like Charles Darwin had been beaten to the post. He was devastated, but friends encouraged him to begin writing. 15 months later, in November 1859, On the Origin of Species was published. 1,250 copies, a modest first edition, but the impact was enormous. So was the controversy. Darwin spent the rest of his life promoting and defending evolution. The wonderful thing about what Darwin did was that he managed to, through very, very careful observation and just thinking about things, uh, present it in a way that uh, became palatable to people. And uh, although, uh, of course, it's caused a tremendous amount of controversy, that was inevitable. Um, once you go through any kind of major paradigm shift like that, uh, not everybody's going to like it. I mean, people today still don't like it. Darwin phrases a lot of his book as a personal invitation to look at things my way for a little while, see how well it works, see all the difficulties, see how I can explain some of the difficulties. Darwin had no idea, of course, what the cell looks like, what the information system is like, what the complexity of the cell is. It seems that Nature is resisting change. Living cell resist change. 30 years ago, 20 years ago, in the early days of genetic engineering, people were envisaging changing organisms at will. It hasn't happened. The examples are minor. We can produce insulin with bacteria. We can produce epohormone with bacteria, but we can't change bacteria to anything else than bacteria. 